Sounds like a one. Almost. Maybe a rim? Yeah. Oh, it's going out in there. Oh, it's the mountain you're in the attic. Is it going off? Yes, it is. Oh. up everybody uh it is the live stream y'all been waiting for like all week uh we are at or for the last few days since we announced it i mean yeah it's one of the two uh we're at the Pachuska axe murder house in Pachuska, iowa this is probably the most haunted house in iowa probably the midwest if not the entire united states it has definitely made some of the most haunted locations um on quite a few different so yeah and if you feel like you might recognize this place you have to watch the show Everybody head on in. It's not too bad. What's up, Bethany? Hey, Shauna, Whitney, Dana, Medina, uh, Candy, Katie, Amanda, Christy, Stephanie, Jaden. What's up? Hey, Jessica. You are all about to walk into one of the most notoriously haunted homes in these United States. So we have the the kitchen area pretty well lit. Um, to start off, we will, uh, yeah, we're gonna take you through now, kind of show you what the general setup is looking like tonight. And then... And just for anybody who's watching throughout the recording, this is an older house. Um, obviously, it's been around since the, I don't even know when it was built, but the oh. murders took place in 1912, 1912 so. so it's over 100 years old. You're going to hear from some floorboard squeaking. You're going to hear things rattling as we move. And that's what I was just doing right there. I was paused during the gears and the lights. Yeah. Cat yeah. The door. We were debunking that earlier. What exactly is <laughs> rattling? So it's this door right here. So, uh, maybe start off uh, here on the ground floor, and then we're going to make our way up to the area that some people know a little bit, uh, potentially a little bit better. Flip it around. So throughout the house, uh, we have our equipment spread going on right here. Uh, so tonight for the live stream, uh, you guys are going to get exposed to some more of the uh, some more of the uh, ITC devices, all that jazz. So we'll be doing some S box work, um, Spirit Box, all sorts of things like that. Um, we do have some things kind of running static throughout the house. So, throughout the house, we have cameras set up. Hey, Christine. Hey, Jack. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Annie. Um, we have a series of cameras set up. And if you checked out the, uh, the Traveler's Moon story um, prior to this, you will be able to see kind of how that camera setup is going. Uh, we've got it set up here in the living room. Um, this is kind of our general nerve center. 
Uh, we have cameras set up in the attic as well as the children's room upstairs. So, I'll give a little mama pats in. Hey, mama. What are you doing? I'm grabbing stuff for one of those. Okay. Uh, we should probably grab the REM pod though. So we actually had uh, story time already. Well, um, we recorded this while it was happening, but it was one of those situations where, uh, you know, you don't think to start recording until after it's uh, a little too late. So we had we uh, had a camera set up in the Stillinger girls' room, and the REM pod was going absolutely bananas. Um, yeah, and, it was and it so to show you our REM pod. Oh, it's on. Uh, to show you the REM pod, you have a light on that? I only Get, have the red one. Uh, so our REM pod, it's got multiple settings. The main one is the you know, standard REM pod setting where you get close and you turn it on. But uh, thank you, Penn Paranormal Ghost Gear. They also have this fun plays music type of setting to it. And it was the most peculiar thing. We were, you know, just here having like a salt, like a normal REM pod interaction and what ended up happening was it just spazzed out it stopped for a minute it turned like it, it switched the settings yeah it went from doing the the beeping that it does to um to playing that tune which you cannot do that unless you push this button on the bottom here so there's no explanation for why or how it switched. It was the craziest thing. And then it just kind of pooped out. We had to uh, tear it all apart. We had to take the antenna out. Um, so, a lot of good REM pod interaction down here. Uh, do, does anybody happen to have an ultraviolet flashlight? Okay. As, all right, everybody. Uh, we're heading up. I don't think we really need it regardless. And it's been the most peculiar thing. So when you know, we go into these places, sometimes things just feel weird. And a lot of times... And I, you know, sometimes psychology plays in it because we know what happened up here. Yeah. It just, it feels heavier. Like, you come upstairs and there's like a weight on your chest. Uh-oh, rotate your phone. There we go. And with the ultraviolet light, you can still see the blood spatters. So guys, just to let you guys know, I will have my phone out um, on and off just because I'm trying to keep up with you guys in chat. We want to make sure that we are keeping this as interactive as possible, so, but we won't be watching full time on the chat so bear with us if we don't see something so yeah okay um so, so uh maybe get into like maybe just a little bit of history real quick for anybody who doesn't happen to know the history of the cash murder house okay um so basically the history of the house is overnight from june 9th into the morning of june 10th the moore family which consisted of josiah and sarah moore and their four kids they had attended an, attended an event at the church, which is a couple blocks up the road from here. And um, when the events were done, they came back to the house and they actually had two house guests with them that evening as well, Lena and Ina Stillinger. Um, it is believed that while they were gone, someone had snuck into the house and was hiding in the attic, which is over there behind Peyton's open back, which is right. great. Right. Oh. <laughs> um, I thought you were sitting down there. I was terrified. Oh, fall down. <laughs> um, so that's the, the theory is that he was hiding in the attic. Sometime after the family had gone to bed and everybody was asleep, he snuck out of the attic and he killed all eight people with an axe. Um, the splatter that you were seeing on the ceiling here would have been splatter from 
uh, Josiah and Sarah Moore, who would have been laying in a bed right here, there's actually hatchet marks yeah, right here from the backswing of where the so, killer swung the axe. Right. So imagine they're you know, laying here on that backswing. That's the back end of the axe doing that. And it's weird because it, it, there's, uh, you know, with round, they tried to keep the place as much as it looked like the morning that they found them. Uh, so when they came in, the mirrors were covered like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so what happened is the, the following morning, you know, when you live in a little bitty town like Villisca, the neighbors all know your routines. The neighbors watch neighbors. And it came time for the Moors who to typically have been getting out of bed, feeding the chickens. And the neighbor lady noticed that there was absolutely no movement at the Moore house. So she came over and she checked and she got no response. And out of concern, she actually got in touch with Josiah's brother, I believe. Um, and he had a key to the house, so he came and unlocked the door and came into the house and just came right back outside and said, they're dead, they're all dead. Um, and unfortunately, um, Forensic they, science wasn't much of a thing back then. Yeah, it was 1912, so they didn't have the technology that we have now to be able to help solve things like that. But also, between the time that, that the door was unlocked and the time that the authorities actually got here to take control of the scene, everybody in town traped through the house. And so any evidence that there would have been that the police could have possibly gotten was destroyed. Um, there's rumors that like people took pieces of Josiah's skull um, and just zero, zero thought to, we need to preserve this in hopes to catch whoever did this. So it is one of Iowa's most notorious unsolved murders. This happened 110 years ago now. Yeah. So it will never be solved. No, this, this will never be solved. And this was like, shock to small town actually in this area uh these murders took tight the tight sinking of the titanic off the front page so this wasn't like a small deal thing no this was a big deal so yeah and you know just, it, you brought these up right yes i did okay do i hear something that sounds like a uh, almost maybe a rim yeah Oh, it's the millimeter oh. in the attic. Yeah. Is it going up? Yes, it is. All right, so uh, among the things we have set up, we have a millimeter Go set up in the attic. <laughs> and it seems to just shut off. And watch your head coming through here, Carter. Oh. Uh, the ceiling is full of nails. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, the device that's going off right now, this is one of our, uh, it's not actually ours, this is a Johnson piece of equipment. This is a millimeter right now. And in this has the same functions as what a REM pod does. So basically there's an electrostatic field going on around that device right now. And anything that comes in to that field will basically set it off. So sorry, we didn't mean to, you know, startle you or anything like that. Can you turn that back on? Can you come up and touch that device? Set the K2 next to that. So if you're watching a paranormal uh, live stream, you probably know all these devices, but uh, we're gonna be the best host we can and kind of explain what's going on here. So the Sorry, idea is that spirits produce or uh, give off EMF or electromagnetic fields when they manifest so <laughs> what we have set up here is a device that can actually read those emf fields uh that's a k2 meter and what will happen is if anything with any sort of electromagnetic <laughs> energy comes in it's going to trigger those lights and we put it next to that little rocking horse there in hopes that maybe uh if one <laughs> of the kids happens to stop in that they can i feel the same way it. jack he's like sweet jesus why doll I don't know. There's always dolls. The only thing worse than dolls are mannequins, like full life size mannequins. Yeah. There's one in the kids' attic, in the kids' closet. Is there scary? Oh my god. I'm glad you told me before I opened that closet door. Oh, you're still gonna find it getting scared. Probably. <laughs> Probably. So. So yeah, we have a ton of things here for whoever's in the attic right now to interact with, and if 
Oh, I just sent them fluctuating. So, big thing to note, this is an old house. There is no electrical wiring anywhere throughout. So there should be no reason that we're getting any sort of EMF interactions like we do here. Or if you can see the... We might want to actually back that up just a little bit from the, the K2. Um, yeah. Only because we are going live, so cell phones can oh, set okay. off the K2 That's meter. Right. Um, so we do want to make sure that we're just keeping that particular meter a little bit away from the phone um, that Carter's holding just to make sure. Okay. And we were actually just getting a, a spike on the null meter here of about 0.4 milligauss, which is very weird for a house that, you know, there's no electrical sources around us right now. Absolutely. Um, okay, so have we explained any of the equipment that we have down here in front of us? Uh, the K2. Okay. Um, one of the other things that we have, this is a music box. Um, that, now that it's up here, I'm trying to remember, do we have our batteries in it? Yes. Okay. Um, so this little gadget came from Vortex Ghost Gear. Um, amazing group. We're going to, we're going to shout out to the people that we get our stuff from. Um, when we've tried something out and we like it, we will absolutely give them a shout out, um, to let you guys know kind of where to get equipment. We like to help people who are trying to figure out what to buy, um, know what, what we've used that we like. Um, we'll also be the first one to tell you if we have something that we don't like. Um, but this is from Go, uh, Vortex Ghost Gear. Um, and they custom made this for us, obviously. This is a music box, and what this is gonna do is when we turn this on, it plays a song. Um, and then it will calibrate, so it takes a little bit of time to calibrate, but once it's done calibrating, when something moves in front of it, it shoots a beam out of about 30, 35 feet is the zone that they usually say. I think it goes a little bit further than that, personally. Um, but 30, 35 feet is about what they say. And if something moves in front of it, then it sets that off. So I'm almost wondering uh, if we shouldn't set this behind him out here. Yeah. So if you want behind to set it, so just basically, on the floor behind you and uh, then turn it on. And you want the you little node pointing right towards right the wall it. right there. Oh. But basically. Oh, in the bedroom? Yeah. Well, yep. like kind of just straight out the door. So basically, yep. if that goes off, and there's someone in the doorway you behind Jason. <laughs> Uh, did you want to use this as a Bluetooth speaker, or did you actually want? Why is that heavy right next to me? <laughs> is there somebody up here with us? I'll tell you what, I will turn on a device right now that actually might make it easy for you to speak with us. Tom was asking, what do we think about the theory that the killer used the train to escape the scene? Um, uh, so that's the tricky thing about a cold case. It's There's, you know, a million two possibilities. I'm, for one, open to that idea. Uh, historically, actually, there were a number of axe murders mm -hmm. going along a particular mm -hmm. trail line. And I know right. it didn't come, like, right through Melissa, but it followed a line that would have made sense. Yeah, I think it's a really good possibility because... Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he was wanting to skip town. He was ready to run when the murders were done. And what better way at that time to get far away than a train? Right. Yeah. Who's up here in the attic with us? We're setting that off. Can you tell us your name very clearly, please? For those of you guys watching live, this is a interactive uh, kind of post. That's why we shoot these things live. So if you have any questions, big mm. interactive. <laughs> oh, it's moving the EMF. What else are we beeping for? I believe that's. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> I believe that is the, the REM pod function okay. in it. So something actually got close to that. How many hours did you sit in this attic? You guys in chat here? Do you guys in chat here? The number two. Uh, Jason thinks he heard their response too. So two hours. Honestly, that if they came home and went right to bed, there's a. It's not an unrealistic number. So we're getting some questions. If we've seen anything or felt anything. Um, I think, you know, we've talked a little bit since we got here and we were chatting while we were eating supper. I think we've all kind of agreed that there's an energy downstairs, but tonight, especially coming upstairs, has been like night and day difference energy wise. You get about halfway up the steps and it's just like you kind of hit this wall that. Um, and it's weird because it's warmer up here. When you're, you know, you're warm, you're comfortable. And it's just, it's thick up here. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about that earlier and I kind of theory on it was anyways that if the you know, killer did come up here and they were in the attic this is where they sat around for hours stewing on what was about to happen right um the only other thing and we were talking about this again at supper when we first got here and johnny was here to let us in um he was telling us just a little bit about the house and the history and i was standing with the cylinder girls bedroom off to this side and i kept seeing like the, a shadow in that room and i was trying to debunk it and trying to see was there light coming in the window that was changing it with my hair you know if i'm sitting here going like this and i i couldn't recreate it i can't swear that i saw something but it something kept getting my attention off to the corner of my my view um what have you guys felt since you've been here or heard or what have your experiences been so far i don't know i'm pretty comfortable downstairs but... Upstairs is a little bit different. I knew we were a little separate. hesitant coming in here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What happened here and stuff, a little hesitant. But downstairs in the kitchen, I feel most comfortable. But the yeah. room was fine, you know, and stuff like that. But upstairs, a little bit different. So you can, you can feel it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. weird in the living room. We were talking earlier, and you almost kind of like, you forget for just a second where we were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, we were just sitting around having a conversation like we. Yeah. In the Polis Cax murder house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, do you have anything? To it's just really sad. Yeah. Really sad yeah. Of you. Yeah. All right, so we're going to switch device types now. I can tell you what I know, at least. Kate, going off too. Yeah. Everything up here is getting triggered right now. And I'm getting cold, and it's hot up here. It is super hot up here. I'm getting kind of cold over here too. <laughs> Switch it up. Yeah. So how how did nobody wake up? Point two, point three. Um. So and guys, for any spirits that are here listening to me share the story that that I've been told, that I've been shown, if I'm wrong. Contradict me. Set off one of these devices and let me know that I have the and wrong story. I'm okay. Play super devil's advocate here. Uh, over the years, a lot of people reported a lot of things in this house. A lot of people have asked who the murderer was and have gotten tons of different answers. I think whatever's in this house is screwing with people. I think it just gives an amplification of what you come in anticipating. So if you're going to come in and you want to interact with the, the Stillinger girls, there's going to be more childlike reactions. If you're coming in here, you know, like Johnny said earlier, wanting to smack a hornet's nest, I think that's what you're going to run into. And I am curious to see if 
And, and my kind of theory on how some paranormal activity works is it's not something that's happening. Uh, that just spiked up to about five milligauss, mm -hmm. which is yeah. freakishly I thought, high. Mm -hmm. I just thought go to like three point eight three. Um, and and for me, I want to know the truth. Pretty, and I don't. I think they know that, and I think that's exactly why we're going to get everything. But I Wait. don't think you're ever going to get a straightforward answer. I could see the killer not giving me a straightforward answer, but why wouldn't the family? Because I don't think the family's here all the time. You no. don't think the family's here? No, I don't think the family's here all the time either. But, 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 but I want to open it up to the spirits that are here, and I, you know, the best I can do is ask you guys, be truthful. But if I'm telling a story that is wrong. Set off one of these devices. Let us know that it's wrong. But my understanding Two. of the reason that nobody woke up. Four. That's me. Six of the six of the people who were murdered here were children. Now, for anybody who has children and they have fallen asleep on the couch, for example, how many of you guys have been able to pick that child up, carry them into bed, put them in bed, tuck them in? Kids don't wake up. They just don't wake up very easily. And I, I share the story that my oldest son, Three, he was four. extremely long. He's he's very tall. And I was carrying him to bed one night, trying to put him into bed, and I dropped him. I didn't quite get him in the bed, and he slept through it. I still picked him up and put him in the bed. Kids can sleep through anything. So I have a question, and feel free to put this back down to zero if I'm right. Did the kids wake up? Some of them did. As far as the parents, how, how he did that is he knew that the parents were going to wake up. And so what I've been shown, and this is just my truth, guys, I obviously have no proof of this, but what they've told me is that he actually hit Josiah first, and he hit him with the blunt end of the axe to actually make him not be able to respond to it right away. So it was two very quick hits. Josiah flipped the axe and hit Sarah and took her out and then took care of the parents. And the kids didn't wake up because kids don't wake up, with the exception of the littlest one. The littlest one did wake up. The other two kids that woke up were actually the Stillinger girls downstairs. They heard the commotion up here. They woke up. They tried to hide. Um, but he saw them, and he found them and killed them as well. So. What channel street? Yeah. I can hit if you want. I'm just saying I don't channel sweep. Somebody's triggering this device. Can you explain to me who's in this chair right now? Sit in it. Did you hear that? Sit in it. What's your name? Is that Lena? I heard Lena. I heard Lena too. Lena, are you here with us, sweetie? What? Lena, are you here with us? Can you say your name for us again? No. Okay. Uh, not, I was, uh, that one up to five? Yeah. Did it really? Yeah. It's a hard question. Yeah. Bring it down. Four. Do you not like that he's moving? Yeah. 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 Why should I sit? Please. 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 That's fair. Come on. <laughs> it feels it, like it, it's almost counterintuitive to the type of place because I can't help but the vibe sit. Please. Am I using their manners? The main reason I'm sitting right now is for my own safety. There are tons of nails coming out of these boards right here. And, you know, based on, 
you know, what we know that Melissa Gax murder house is, there should be nothing here that cares for my safety. But that's not true, because there was a family here. There was a mother here that loved those kids. Why is this keeping you going? I know it's bad, too. <laughs> what? The door locked by itself? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, you're knocking. So, what just happened? Uh, so, you know the front door that we've been going in and out of all night? Back door, but yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, so, I go downstairs to get a cat toy, which is very fortuitous. Um, I can't get in. <laughs> and it wasn't just like the doorknob was like stuck. The physical lock had been turned on him. Yeah. And we've been using the, we haven't touched the yeah. physical lock all night. But we've been going in and out of that door yeah. all night. And I don't even think we locked it when we left for dinner. I think we just used the padlock. I used the padlock. Yeah. yeah. I just closed the door. I went out there and closed the door and mm -hmm. I couldn't get back in. You want to maybe do a little bit more spirits in here? Did, did you want to try to use the ball? Like play um, the ball? We can, but we can run spirits while we're doing Whoa. it. Whoa. Is the motion line? Yeah. So I've got a couple of lights set up up here. Um, you basically did the motion detector like you just saw happen. So basically, this is putting down a little beam around it. The yeah. light turns on only when something breaks that beam. Yeah, we were just kind of all standing here talking and it went off. And I'm wondering if around proximity is just enough to the hand right now that, like, we just set it off being froze to it, but yeah, there was no one around when that last one was turned on. I call it a cat toy, but it's, a, it's basically a ball with a little motion sensor, so when it moves... Oh, See that? <laughs> <laughs> Not my back. Originally, and that oh five three three four three three. Did you just come out of the closet as Chris was going in there? Yeah, did you see that? Seven point nine. Yeah, seven point nine of you. Six point three, three point five. We've heard that there's kids in this room that like to play ball. <laughs> I'm going to roll the ball that direction. Can you roll it back to me, please? Roll it back to me. The motion light went off again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just thinking logically, correct me bunk. There's not like moving or I just want to make sure that we're no so the position that these are on right now uh, you got one on the front of the bed you have the other one on uh, this stand here so I mean even when the heater does kick on it's behind this curtain so if the curtain's not setting off those lights I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's turned into the live tonight. Um, we've had a lot of people, uh, and we appreciate that. You know, whether you are followers of Travel Traveler's Moon all the time, or if you guys are new and just tuned in because you heard it was Velisca, and Velisca's a cool place. Um, we appreciate that. Be sure to give a, a like on this video and go out to Traveler's Moon. Give us a like, give us a follow. We uh, try to make sure that we give you guys content. We try to make sure that um, we're sharing these adventures with you guys as part of the reason um, investigations like this. So 
Um, again, a huge thank you to the Johnson. Yes, that's why I stole the camera. Yeah, definitely. Carter, thank you for running the camera for so long. Awesome camera work, my man. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Reverend, someone had heard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are Traveler's Moon. I'm Kelly. You I'm need not. to do our, you need to do our <laughs> sign off there, Chris. Here. No, we're good, we're good. <laughs> So, Why don't you turn the camera around so we can? Uh, I guess because now we don't have, have a light. Have a light. Yeah. So thank you everybody for tuning into the Traveler's Moon live stream from the Villisca Axe Murder House tonight. Um, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe, share the video, all that sorts of love. If anything absolutely bananas starts happening again throughout the course of the night, we will definitely be uh, sharing that with you. So uh, yeah, the live stream. Just oh, killed. Just totally. killed it. Just killed it. <laughs> Last year was really only part of the investigation process for us, uh, so make sure you uh, you hop on the Travelers Moon social media and see what actually came of tonight, because you're getting like an hour, hour 20-ish of uh, what's going to be investigation that goes on until probably 4 a.m. We have static cams running throughout the building, we've had digital recorders running throughout the night, it's times when we're not even here, so that's all stuff that we're going to have to go through after the fact, so yeah, we'll definitely be posting more um, sharing what we got. Love Thank you guys. so much, guys. Ow. <laughs>